Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming another what's on my face video and I filmed one of these previously and I got some good feedback from you guys. A lot of you said you did really like it so I thought I would do another one because I use some products I don't use on a regular basis and I'm always trying out new things and I feel like I never talk about makeup products enough even though I'm a beauty channel and I do post every other day so you pretty much get like 15 or more videos for me, but I still feel like I never talk about products enough like I'm always doing hauls and like review videos But I still feel like I could do more so I thought this would be a fun way to kind of show you guys What's on my face but not have it be like a tutorial or a get ready with me because get ready with me's are Kind of not mind-numbing, but sometimes they can be boring and usually I get so focused on doing my makeup I kind of forget to talk about the product or they're like really lengthy videos like my get ready with me's are Usually about a half an hour long and I feel like that's just too long sometimes you know so anyway I have a little basket of goodies here that I used on my face today and I'm ready to tell you guys what I think of them and of course this is a great way for you also to see like what it turned out like now keep in mind I did put this makeup on at like 6 30 this morning and it is like 6 o'clock at night so I've had this makeup on for pretty much a full day I didn't really touch up anything except I just made sure my nose had some foundation and I put my lipstick back on so yeah I don't know kind of interesting let me know if you enjoy this type of video I'm gonna try and do a poll up in the cards so you guys can vote I don't really know what my options will be but either yes or no if I should do more videos like this so keep that in mind and let's get into it so the first thing I want to show you guys is the setting spray I use. This is the makeup finishing spray by the brand Scandinavia. And as you guys can see, this is in my finish up in 2018. I guess it's my project pan, I could call it. And I feel like I'm almost done with this. I feel like I, I'm up to about here for products. So should be pretty easy. And of course, then I will substitute something else in. But I'm not a big fan of the Scandinavia finishing spray. I actually don't have a lot of setting finishing sprays that I like. The only one that seems to really work for me is MAC Fix Plus. Everything else is like eh, eh. Oh, and I also really like the Smashbox Primer Water. And I'm so excited because I finished a bottle and then I saw that Smashbox was having a sale. So I got it for half price, which is super exciting. So, yep, that is the setting spray I used today. And then my mascara combo for today was the Urban Decay. Troublemaker Mascara and the Essence Volume Stylist 18 Hour Lash Extension Mascara. Now, the Urban Decay Troublemaker, I did get on like a good decent deal, so that's why I bought it. And of course, the packaging. Again, this was like any other product that launched. It was huge on YouTube because so many people got it in PR. And since I haven't feel like I've heard anyone talk about it, I personally like this mascara. The only problem is I inevitably always poke my eye with this brush. So I think it's probably just me. Uh, but the way the bristles are designed, I always poke myself in the eye. And I've had this for, I think, longer than three months. So I'm ready to actually go ahead and put this in my empties bin. I, it's a love-hate relationship. I feel like it does do a good job of giving me volume. But I always end up poking my eye and tearing. So it kind of ruins my makeup, so I am done with that mascara. And this one, I think, is pretty good as well, but it's not, like, amazing. But it's also, like, under $5, so I can't be too hard on it. But I've heard a lot of people on YouTube swear by this, so I wanted to try it out. And, yeah, I don't really love it. It says it also has lengthening fibers in it. I haven't really noticed that. I actually really like this one for my lower lash line because it has a very skinny brush. So it's really easy for me to get into my lower lash line. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to say about this mascara. So today I decided to pull out my Bobbi Brown Skin Longwear Weightless Foundation. This is a full cover oil-free shine control foundation. Now, this is actually a new foundation by Bobbi Brown. I got the shade Golden Honey, which is 5.75, and this claims to be a longwear foundation um, that is oil-free, so I think people with oily skin will really, really love it. I actually am a huge fan of matte foundations, but this is like ultra, ultra matte, and I don't know if 
it's because it's winter time. I actually feel like my face is so dry when I wear this foundation. So I kind of regret buying it, but I haven't reviewed this for you guys yet. So I thought I would mention it in this video. Now, as I was putting this on, I felt like it wasn't blending into my skin well. So I picked up this NARS foundation, which I have been using um, the last couple of weeks because this is a all day luminous weightless foundation and in the winter time it's been working really well for me. This is in the medium dark one shade which is Syracuse and you get one fluid ounce. Now I am a huge lover of NARS foundation. I swear by the sheer glow. It's my holy grail. The shade Syracuse in the winter is like my holy grail shade. It just works so well. And when this foundation first came out, I didn't actually like it at all. So I actually ended up returning it and I actually have a review of that on my channel if you guys want to see it. So I actually repurchased this this past year because I wanted to see if I still wouldn't like the foundation. And I actually ended up really liking it. The only thing with this is it's not very, very long wearing. I don't feel like it's an all day wear, but I also don't really expect my foundation when I'm going to work to last like perfection on my face. If I'm looking for like a more long wearing foundation, I'll probably go with like Estee Lauder or something like that. But I feel like for work to have kind of that luminous glow, I do like this. So I tried to mix this in with the Bobbi Brown to make it a little bit more blendable because I was having a tough time blending this in. So those are my little mini reviews on these two foundations for you guys. Next, of course, I had to use a concealer. So I have been trying to finish up the Tarte Shape Tape. Now, I've already talked about this, so I really don't have too, too much to say, but I don't really love this concealer. I'm kind of on the hunt for a new under eye concealer. I do like the ones by ColourPop, but this one I'm ready to just use up and be done with. The next item I used is also in my project pan, I, and I believe I featured this in my last What's On My Face video as well, but this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. This is the first one they ever came out with, so this is about three years old and I really want to try and hit pan on these so I try to use this every day to set my entire face and sometimes I use the bronzer as well. Now today's eyeshadow look was created using two palettes and this one is the newest palette in my collection. I was so excited because over Valentine's Day Muse Beauty Pro was doing 20% off their entire website and I decided to jump on it because this is the only Viseart palette that I had. Yeah, oops, I forgot. This pan is loose. I need to glue it back in. That is so wackadoodle. $80 palette and I can't even get the pan to stay in. Anyway, so this is the only one that I really, really wanted. I don't like their shimmer shadows at all. So I have their dark mattes, the neutral, the warm mattes, and then I've been really interested in color lately. So I decided to pick up Editorial Brights palette. I don't think I'm going to be buying any more Viseart palettes, even though they're coming out with new palettes like every week at this point but I do love this one. It was the first time I used this so I can't 100% say like oh my gosh it's amazing but oh my gosh it's amazing. I didn't see any fallout. I used the two purple shades so I used this one in my crease and this one in my outer corner to deepen it up and it was really lovely and honestly these are worth it. I was talking to my friend Paulina from Paulina's Beauty and she had mentioned wanting this palette and I was like girl you need it. She loves color. So I told her she definitely needed that palette. And then to top it off with shimmer, I used the ColourPop Pretty Much palette and I used the shade OTP, which is a beautiful like lavender shimmer shade and it really makes my eyelid pop. So I really like that. I've been really enjoying this palette. It is a little bit more like darker, more cool tone than I was expecting, but I really like this purple shade and this one as well. And I use this shade, which is called Neither Do I, as a brow bone highlight. So it's a fun little palette. These are so handy. And for $12, I really can't, you know, complain too much about them. Now, my face products, the rest of my face, consists of these three items. Now, this is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer in the shade Deep Bronze. Now, I had featured this in a haul, my end of... February haul because I had two hauls in February, one at the beginning of February, one at the end. And I had talked about this and I can't believe this is deep bronze. This is barely going to work for me. Like it works now because I'm pretty light, but 
I was really expecting them to do more when they said they were going to expand their shade range. So I bought this when it first launched in like the light color. And I was like, Karen, what were you thinking? But I kept it because I thought I could use it in my kit. And then I was like, ooh, they're extending their color range. So I tried deep bronze and I feel like really bad for people with dark skin because they don't get to experience Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. And me neither. I mean, I can barely use that one. And it's like, you know what? People with darker skin tones also want delicious coconut bronzer that works for their skin tone. And I feel that same way about the Marc Jacobs bronzer too because they don't make a dark one for my skin tone and I feel like it's super unfair. So if anybody is watching from those two brands, I feel like you should step up your game because you're excluding a big part of the beauty community by not having shades for us. Okay, so my highlighter today is the Becca highlighter in the shade Rose Gold. This is one of my first highlighters, I believe by Becca and just in general. I can see the pan like, I can see, the, like, a little bit of silver, like a teeny tiny bit of silver. So I just want to pan my, at least one of my Becca highlighters. And I looked at them all, and I realized, like, rose gold was, like, the one I was, like, closest to panning. So I decided to put it in my, like, Project Pan, unofficial panning video, so that I could try and use up some of my makeup products. The same is for this guy. This was free from Sephora. This is the Tarte blush in the shade Parte. This was their birthday gift, I believe, last year. And I've actually purchased a few of these mini blushes and panned at least one that I can think of off the top of my head. So I thought it would be pretty realistic for me to try and finish up one more this year. Finally, for eyeliner, I did go ahead and try this sample of the Urban Decay Perversion glide on eye pencil now I've definitely had perversion before and I didn't think it was that great so I don't know if they've like upped their formula but this one did stay in my waterline pretty well so I was happy with that I don't think I'd run out and buy a full size version of this I'll probably just use up this sample size and be done with it but it was nice to switch things up and I wanted to tell you guys that it wasn't so horrible um, the last thing I want to talk about is my lip color this is the Jouer lip cream in the shade Noisette. Now this is like one of their most famous nude shades and at one point I was really really into the Jouer lip cream. There was a lot of hype on these on YouTube as well mostly because I think they had quite a few affiliates pushing Jouer and still do. I just don't watch most of them anymore but these are really good and I do like the shades. They do have a lot of shades and Noisette is just an easy nude. I just thought with this really bright purple look I wanted to choose something very neutral so this is Noisette by Jouer if any of you had been considering picking this up. I like the formula it's not too drying and yeah it's a good nude shade. Okay guys that is everything I wanted to talk to you about in this edition of what's on my face. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns or brilliant insights down in the comment section and I will catch you on the next one. Bye guys! <laughs>